Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Eastwood's Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joyce Emery. I am so happy to greet those online watching with us and those in the sanctuary, especially those that are new to us or have come back after a season. This is the first day of October. Can you believe it? Woo. Woo. And it's Worldwide Communion Day. So we are coming to the table, a table that is open to all who confess Christ with believers across the world. We are a congregation committed to celebrating Jesus and caring and connecting with all people. And to that end, we hope that you will read the bulletin and uh, tear out the insert and let us know of your presence. Tomorrow night, I'm hosting a new member dinner here at 6. If you're interested in joining or learning about more about this church, please let me know today because I'm cooking dinner. I'm making Donna Frazier's wonderful chicken enchiladas and a fresh green salad. So if you're interested in learning more about this church, let me know and we'll show dinner here tomorrow night at 6. Today, after worship, we're looking at going to Guatemala with Sedepka. And so Catherine Monroe will be hosting in the meeting room an informational time to ask questions, to, feel what, to learn what the cost will be and the itinerary. This will be at the end of February into March of 2024. We've had a nice sign up. And so if you, if you haven't signed up, please come and learn more together. We have a women's retreat scheduled for next Saturday at Manuka on the other side of the river. Uh, and we have um, almost filled it. So if you're interested in going, there's just a few more spots open to the women of the church. You saw uh, a thing about the Holiday Bazaar. Our friends, Unity Family, are hosting a bazaar on November 11th and they're eager to have us come and shop or participate. Family Promise is ho hosting a family dinner, a fundraising dinner, and our own Pat Norby is going to be hosting a table. If you'd like to be at that table, please talk to her. This is the week that our men are going on the walk to Emmaus down in um, Turner, Oregon at the Asbury Retreat Center at Aldersgate. Oh, how could I forget? Aldersgate. <laughs> I know that. So we're holding that whole event in prayer. Those are the announcements for this morning, and I invite you to center your hearts as we celebrate the gift of worship together. So let's light the Christ candle at home and in the sanctuary. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. A meal of bread and wine, of meat and bitter herbs. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and be served. As we break the bread and share the cup, our understanding may fail us. But we will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of his love for all the children of the world, every language, every race. Let us worship God. Amen. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy October. Yeah. Yeah, that was said. Yeah, we're here. Um, yeah, this morning, uh, we're to, we get to have worldwide to the table, and so together this morning we get to sing um, about our great God, who loved us so much that he gave us his only son, right, so that we shall live uh, an eternal and an everlasting life with him. So let's sing that, let's come to the table, 
as we sing God so well.
to be our prayer, that we honor you in all that we do and all that we say. Lord, just allow us to lift this time to you, uh, this time of praise, this time of prayer, uh, this time of uh, worship, Lord. Just allow us to be a body, your body, Lord, uh, as we take your body in, uh, in the blood today. Just allow us to remember uh, what you've done on the cross, God, what you're doing in our lives and what you will do. Um, we just can't wait until you come again. We love you so much, Lord. We thank you. And in your awesome name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As we claim God, King of all our lives, it means that we need to confess the places in our lives where we don't want to turn over. And so we pray together, first in unison, and then confessing privately. Let us pray. Loving Christ, on that night long ago, you knew that your hour had come. You knew full well what lay ahead of you. Your disciples loved you and followed you, but they had also failed you. They would fail you yet again that night, and one would be betray you. Yet you washed their feet as a servant would, even the feet of your betrayer. We have also loved you and followed you. We have also failed you, and we cannot comprehend the love that you show us, the love that is our example, the love that tells us to do as you have done for us. May we be like you, Master, servants of all, May all see how we long to be your faithful disciples. May all see how we love each other just as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray and in silence. Amen. Friends, if we confess our sin, Jesus the Christ is faithful and just to forgive our every sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And as Christ forgives us, we need to forgive one another when, when we are wronged and when we wrong others. And so we learn to claim that peace of Christ as we walk day by day. And so I invite you to stand and turn to those close to you and pass the peace of Christ, saying, The peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
challah bread, and it's spelled C-H-A-L-L-A-H-8. And I want you to know that it smells beautifully. It smells beautiful, wonderful. And our Jewish friends love challah bread, and they use it for almost every festival and feast. And they just celebrated Rosh Hashanah on uh, September 12th through 17th. We have uh, Kol Ami, our Jewish friends, just up there on um, 119th. Uh, rabbi Elizabeth is their uh, rabbi. And um, when they celebrate these feasts like Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, where you celebrate the new year for the Jewish people, celebrating when God created Adam and Eve, people love to share this bread. You see, bread has been a important part of these celebrations, including Passover. And to, today we're reading the story of Jesus gathering his, with his disciples in the upper room and celebrating Passover. And they would not have eaten this fragrant pe- uh, loaf of bread because they, at Passover, were telling the story of the time when the people were in bondage in Egypt. And finally, Pharaoh said, get your people out of here. And so they gathered all their things and they quickly got out of Egypt and left for the promised land. And because they could not let the bread rise at a Jewish Passover meal, they eat matzah bread, matzah crackers. These are pretty awful. (laughs) But we brought some extras. You could taste them today during um, our refreshment time. But these flat crackers are a reminder that when the people got out of town, they didn't have time to let the bread rise and become beautiful and fragrant because it takes hours for a loaf of bread to get like this. Rather, they had to take their, their, their bread dough and go quickly and leave. At the Passover table, we have something called a Seder plate, and we've put it, or a Passover plate, we've put a picture. And every part of the Passover plate, everything on the plate tells a story, a part of the story of the people leaving Egypt. And there's some water usually on this side that's salty to remind them of the tears that were shed as they left Egypt. So for any young people, in, in, I have a Seder plate. It's a paper plate. So are there any young people over here, over here? You're not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was cold and cruel. There might be a young person by Maria. So here's um, a Seder plate. It's really fun to look at the various foods on the Seder plate that remind us. And that's the Passover meal. Thank you for listening so carefully. Good morning, congregation. It's good to be here. As members of the body of Christ, we're called to care for each other at all times. That means the times of rejoicing and giving thanks and praising God when we get good news. And it also means lifting each other up before our Lord during those difficult times when we're hurting or grieving or just feeling lost emotionally. Let's be in prayer together before our Lord. How can we repay you, Lord, for all your goodness to us? As we gather together this morning, we will lift up and call on your name. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming into your presence, of recognizing that you are here with us now, right now, in this moment. We want to see you with our hearts and hear you speak to us this day. We love you, Lord, because you have heard our voices and our pleas for mercy. Because you incline your ear to us, we will call on you as long as we live. We all have made choices that have taken us away from your ideal for us, Lord. We've decided to go it on our own, 
to be self-reliant to the extent that we ignore your call to us to be like Christ. Our sin, all sin, results in death, and we die a little inside every time we ignore the voice of the Spirit. The snares of death encompassed us. The pangs of mourning laid hold on us. We suffered distress and anguish. Then we called on your name, Lord. O oh Lord, we pray, deliver our souls. We thank you, God, that your loving kindness towards us has no end. There is no bottom to the ocean of grace you have for us. We thank you for reminding us that we cannot wander too far away from you. Your mercy draws us back and restores us. Lord, you preserve the simple. When we were brought low, you saved us. We can let go of our distress, for you have dealt bountifully with us. We lift up the names and faces and situations that you know concern us, Lord. We bring these people who are hurting, sick, desperate, lonely, or in need of your special touch to the foot of your throne. You are king. Move in your sovereign will to work in their lives so that your name is lifted and glorified. For you, Lord, have delivered our souls from death, our eyes from tears, our feet from stumbling. We will walk before you, Lord, in the land of the living. We also lift up all those attending the men's walk to Emmaus this week. Return their souls to your rest. We pray that each of them will feel your presence during their meditations and worship and will develop a closer relationship with you. Please be in prayer for our brothers and sisters listed in the bulletin, as well as for the children whose names are projected on the screens behind me. And Lord, we ask you to bless those we now name before you and also in the silence of our hearts. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all those for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now I ask that you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Chris Eddy, Elder for Operations, um, and uh, this morning it's a special offering is being done for one great hour of sharing. Um, there are envelopes in the pews, and I invite you on behalf of the session to make a special offering above and beyond your normal pledge to the one great hour of sharing offering that Christians take across these United States. All of the funds will go directly to our General Assembly, where they will be divided three ways to, dis to support Presbyterian Disaster Relief Assistance, um, which provides 10,000 in emergency grants to local Presbyterians to distribute in their local areas when disaster strikes. And then Presbyterians build and maintain the villages for long-term recovery volunteers. The Presbyterian Hunger Fund which gives grants across the nation to local Presbyterians to alleviate hunger issues, and the Self-Development of People Fund, 
which gives grants to self-governing entrepreneurial efforts to build sustainable businesses. There's an envelope you can use. It says global witness offering, but we'll go to one great hour of sharing. Thank you. And if the ushers will come forward, please. We'll pray. Our God, our gifts are so minute in comparison to your bounty. Transform our simple offerings into ministries that quench parched lives with the water of eternal life. Nurture our need to share your water and your spirit through the gifts that you have given us so freely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's there. We've come to the time uh, that we are calling our solemn song. Uh, and this week, or this day, and our focus is on Psalm 116. And it's fitting that we're looking at Psalm 116 this morning uh, as we take communion. Uh, there is uh, an arrangement of the text uh, that we will sing, and it is called Our Blessing Cup is a Communion. So we will be singing that uh, together, playing that together. So just bask in the text. Uh, if you would like, you can take out your Bible to have it ready, because we will read the text together after this. So, blessing about
Were you going to go first, or was I going first? I'm going first, okay. <laughs> I'm reading Psalm 116, which we've heard beautifully already in our prayer, and of course now just sung. I love this psalm. I love the Lord, because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's my privilege to be reading from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, <clears throat> but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. 
So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Fast food or grab and go are new concepts in our age. I bet that every single one of us in this room would have grandparents, well, maybe not everyone, but would have grandparents who have no idea what we're talking about when we use the term fast food. What's that? Or a grab and go section of the super supermarket or a restaurant. I sense that modern day supermarkets would confound many of our grandparents. Often they confound me. But you and I are often used to eating on the run these days. And eating on the run was unthinkable to the ancient Hebrew people. Meals were to be treasured and the time sacred. So when Moses ordered the Hebrews to flee, to miss a meal, to not wait for the bread to rise, this was an atrocity. Grab and go for them meant tears and losing everything for promised freedom. It meant a flat, tasteless bread rather than a sumptuous loaf. So the Passover meal that Jesus asked his disciples to prepare for him, getting an upper room, was a long, slow process. As they came, the participants would recline around the table and tell the story of this Passover every year. And the Jews gave themselves lots of time and space to tell this story of trouble and the story of freedom. And children had a role at the table. They asked questions. And by the time the disciples gathered in that upper room for Passover, they knew exactly what to expect because Jews had been practicing this Passover meal for over 1,300 years. They knew the order and the menu, but they were in for a very disturbing evening. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, you prepare a feast for us. And you invite us to come just as we are, tears and triumphs. And you ask us to come and meet the living word, Jesus the Christ, who becomes our Passover lamb, our Passover feast. Open us to his word for us today. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. So I don't know if you've ever seen a Haggadah script, but this this Haggadah script for the Seder meal, Passover, is um, a long liturgy. And it is the story of the night above all nights, when God heard the cries of the people in bondage in Egypt and set a plan in place for their deliverance. You know the story, Moses is called in a burning bush, and he goes back to the scene of his crime where he had murdered a man to speak to the powerful systems that be where he was raised when Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the bulrushes and raised him as her own son in Pharaoh's household. Moses is called to speak to Pharaoh and 10 plagues will burden the people until finally the angel of death passes over and takes every firstborn animal and son and Pharaoh says, go, get out of here. And the people flee. The meal remembers the story and the people remember that God keeps God's promises. But on that particular night with Jesus in Jerusalem in the upper room, the order is interrupted, disrupted, and things get very strange. First of all, right in the middle of the meal, it's not scripted. Jesus gets up and kneels as a servant and washes the feet of his disciples. Household servants were supposed to do that. 
to wash the feet of the weary travelers who came as guests, not the hosts, and especially not a treasured rabbi. And if a Jew was planning to head to the temple, they would perform the ritual of cleansing required, but they would go to a pool like the Pool of Siloam. That was the place for ritual cleansing in Jerusalem. But Jesus gets on his knees and he calls them to a new type of service. And he tells them that they're going to be sent to do the same, to wash the feet of the world. And then the meal gets even more disturbing because one of this tight band of brothers is told that he is going to betray Jesus. And there's not been any inkling that we are told in the scriptures about this kind of betrayal. The writer of the Gospel of John has no explanation for this break, except he says the devil enters Judas. There is nothing, absolutely nothing orderly explainable about what Judas does. Judas has been a trusted treasurer, keeping the purse of this band of brothers. You know, this meal could begin to give one heartburn. And then Jesus gives a new commandment of love and tells them that he's going to go someplace where they cannot go. And then another one of them will betray him before the cock crows three times, within six to eight hours before the sun rises on the new day. What is happening here? It feels maybe as if the angel of death is passing over again. That death is coming. And as we look back with the disciples and the apostles, we see this Passover meal being transformed for us. The four cups of Passover are an integral part of the Passover celebration. They stand for each of the four promises the Lord makes to his people in Exodus chapter 6. Four cups. First, the cup of sanctification. I will bring you out from the burdens of the Egyptians. You will no longer be oppressed by them. You will be free. I will rescue you from their bondage, the second cup. I will redeem you with a outstretched arm, the third cup, and the cup of praise, the fourth. I will take you in as my people. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, becomes the fulfillment of every promise made to God's people. He is the one who brings us out from the weight of sin, the burden of slavery to things that are not of God. Jesus makes us whole. Jesus the Christ claims us and makes us his own. He is the cup of salvation for us. And what is this cup of salvation that the psalmist lifts lifts in praise to the Lord that we have sung and read about this morning? Probably it refers to the drink offering prescribed in Leviticus chapter 23. For you see, at the yearly feast of the first fruits, the Israelites were to submit a drink offering, a quarter of a hen of wine. I don't know what a hen of wine is, but scholars think that it's about a quart of wine. They were to give it to God in gratefulness for God's continued salvation and provision. In the promised land. This liquid pouring was poured out on the altar, accompanied by other contributions from the products of the harvest in the fall. And these offerings were given as reminders that the rich fruits of harvest were all from God and depended on God's favor. Drink offerings were frequently presented in the Bible to thank God for salvation. After the Lord appeared to Jacob at Bethel and changed his name to Israel, Jacob set up a stone pillar to mark where God had met him and wrestled and spoke with him. And he poured a drink offering over it, says Genesis 35. At the ordination of priests, a drink offering was presented. 
And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul compared his sacrificial ministry to an act of worship. I'm quoting Philippians chapter 2. But even if I am poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. In the faith of death, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, I am being poured out like a drink offering and the time for my departure is near. This cup of salvation is also suggestive of God's good gifts to humans, which David extolled in Psalm 23. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessings. The psalmist loves the Lord because God has heard every word, every request. God knows us. God hears us, even when death is all around us. And even when our life is interrupted with troubles we never expected, God is gracious and righteous and merciful. Sometimes when I crawl into bed at night, I, I, oh, well, I always, every time I crawl into bed at night, I think about what has happened that day and I give thanks to the Lord But sometimes I crawl into bed at night and go, I never guessed what was going to happen today. This day was full of surprises that I never could have expected. Thank you, Lord, for being with me, for being with the people I love through all the challenges of life. So one more time, for you have delivered my soul from death, says the psalmist, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. What shall I turn to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. So as we come to this communion table, we come from the vantage point of the Passover meal, the Last Supper, For us, this table is never an altar. It is a holy table where all are welcome until everyone gets to the table who needs to be here. And when the last person comes, we believe that Christ, the Messiah, will return in glory for us. We call that the second coming. And millions of believers share this feast around the globe on this World Communion Sunday. And the words of institution are shared in thousands of language. And each one of them hears that this is the bread broken for you. And this is the cup of salvation for you. And when I come to this table, I sense that just on the other side, in another dimension, our loved ones, who have come to this table before, are there at the wedding feast of the Lamb, celebrating the victory of Christ. So at this time, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to stand and say what we believe, words most likely from the second century as we recite the Apostles' Creed together. And then let's have just a moment of silent prayer. And I invite you to pour out your hearts to the Lord to be real, to be honest. God can take it, no matter what you're feeling. And then we'll hear the words given to us across the centuries, spoken by Jesus at this table, reforming the Passover meal and making it a joyful feast of the people of God. Will you stand and join with me in saying the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and let's be in prayer. Gracious God, receive the prayers of your saints as they prepare to come to this table. Hear our prayers. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women will come from north and south, east and west to sit at this table in the kingdom of heaven. Our Savior invites all those who trust in him to come to this feast and be fed. There will be hosts that will come forward in just a moment, and we're going to invite you to come down the side aisles and take the elements and return to your seats where we will share and drink the bread and the cup together. If you are not comfortable coming forward, I have the privilege of coming to you and bringing the elements to you. Let us pray the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God. For you are the creator of heaven and earth. You made every one, every nation, every people to live on the face of this earth. And so with your people on earth and the company of heaven, we praise your name. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us new with a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, the family of Christ joins together at this holy table. And so in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying that Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour on, out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with Christ throughout the world. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, <coughs> now and forever. Amen. We recall that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to the Father, he broke the bread, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. And so whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. The feast is ready.
I invite those serving to come forward. The feast is ready. Come. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who believe in me will never hunger. Those who believe in me will never thirst. Eat all of it. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Cut off from me. You can do nothing. Drink all of it. Please join me in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we love to eat. And we love to sit at meals with good friends and family. Thank you for providing us the most amazing table where we can come and be fed in our very souls, where you meet us and you know exactly what we like and what we need. So as we prepare to rise from this table, give us a heart to love you more and to look at the world through your eyes and to be people who serve one another, maybe even washing a foot or two or helping someone in a wheelchair or helping a needy neighbor. Oh God, make us be ready to serve in Jesus' name as he has served us. Amen. So before we go you get to sing together. Uh, and this is a song that may not be super familiar uh, to us. Uh, it's called Yesu Yesu, and it's actually in 
the hymnal, yes, the blue book that is not the Bible, but it is the hymnal, uh, right next to you underneath the seat. Uh, if you want to turn to that, uh, it is number 367. It's 367. And let's just speak that text, okay? Because this, this refrain, this chorus is going to come up throughout the song, uh, and then we will stand and we will sing it. So repeat after me. Let's say, Yesu, Yesu. Yesu, Yesu. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Show us how to serve. Show, Show us how to serve. The neighbors we have from you. The neighbors we have from you. Yeah. With conviction. Let's stand and let's sing. Uh, Yesu, Yesu. <laughs> So go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which you see in Jesus the Christ. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of God will go with you now and forevermore. Amen and amen.